Hey loves, welcome back to my YouTube channel, West Indie Collection. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. So in this video, I'm gonna be basically talking about what being homeless had taught me, like being in a homeless shelter has taught me. So I just wanted to just share with you guys um, some knowledge. Um, if you guys are ever considering going to a homeless shelter, if you, let's say, are in that situation or may soon be in that situation or you just never know what life throws at you. So I just wanna just share some like insight with you all and things that it taught me or just give you guys basically what it's like being in a homeless shelter and what you guys could expect at least if you do go to one. So if you're interested in watching this video, make sure you guys like this video, hit the push notifications and subscribe to my YouTube channel because you know, I really feel like if I could share my journey to help someone, you know, I would love that. So yeah, let's get into this video. All right, you guys, so pretty much, obviously, I've been homeless multiple times before. It didn't just start it with me, though. It started when I, you know, used to live with my mom as a child, you know, but, um, yeah, so I've been in different, like, shelters, I guess, in different cities. So pretty much, like, being homeless, there's different types of, like, homeless shelters. There's ones with pregnant women. There may be ones where it's you and your family. There's even ones, I think, where you are you could be there, like, with your boyfriend. They may just keep you guys separated. I'm not too sure. You guys probably are going to be together. And then there's ones, like, if you're in a domestic violence situation. I do want to say, though, being a homeless shelter, I, like, well, being in a homeless shelter, they have resources. And honestly, I'm not even going to lie to y'all, a lot of them don't really have that many resources. So if you're thinking you're going to go to a homeless shelter and they're going to do everything for you or just give you everything, like, hey, here's the resources. No, that's not how it works. You have to do the work. You have to do the work. Ain't nobody going to really check on you. You got to be the ones to go to the staff. You got to be the ones to do your research. You got to be the ones to take the information that they do have and use that to your ability. A good thing about homeless shelters is they do get like sponsors or people that donate to the shelter, whether that's clothing, food. That's how you're basically able to eat. Now they do like money from the government and that's what keeps it rolling. Like as much people they come in. And that's another thing. I feel like they take advantage of people because like they are quick. Like it is very easy to get kicked out of a homeless shelter and boom, you're replaced with somebody else. So it's not like they really care to be honest. And it is speaking from like experience It's speaking from what I've seen. Like, do not go into a homeless shelter thinking that you're going to make friends because you're not really there to make friends. I'm not saying that it's something that can't happen because everybody could get like clicky or just have a person they socialize to. And I don't know if you end up keeping in contact with them. Me, I really don't care to keep in contact with anybody. Uh, I recently, I have, you know, been cool with someone outside of the shelter you know, but she was a co-worker. But as far as just friends, like, I never really cared about that. You know, um, yeah, I really didn't. And another thing is, in homeless shelters, it be like, drama. Like, it doesn't matter how old you are. It's, like, drama everywhere. So you got to also make sure you're paying attention and that you're on your P's and Q's. Because just by trying to involve yourself or engage in drama or if your name is going around, that can, like, jeopardize where you stay as well. You know, so you definitely got to watch who you're talking to, watch what you say, because, you know, people spread things, you know, and it could potentially get you kicked out depending on the situation. So just be mindful that don't go to a homeless shelter thinking that you're going to make friends. And um, so, yeah, so basically homeless shelters, they get like resources. There's people that will come, whether that's celebrities, football players, or where you guys get, you know, toys for your children around the holidays they usually have people that come in and do activities or they'll give you transportation to a church or if there's job programs or even if it's not a job program sometimes you know they will give you like bus bus passes to get to and from work so i do want to say take advantage of all the resources hey that's one thing i loved is getting like a lot of free stuff like free socks free this free that um, because that's kind of part of it because it's like they do want to see you, you know, get on your feet, you know, but at the same time, I feel like they're not going to really help you. 
you know like they're not gonna like really like i said do it for you and not that i'm expecting them to do the work for me heck no but just by observation like some people think like that's their easy way out to come right back out of homeless and that boom you're just gonna get an apartment that fast because it don't always work that way you know they can only give you what they have and if they don't really have the knowledge or resources they're not going to really be able to help you so that's why they give you like you know like certain months or like a one month like until it's time for you to leave because you're not there to get comfortable you're not there to just sit around you have to go and get it like look for a job find child care you know some of them have people in there where you can speak to regarding that or how to go about it but you got to be the one that's leaving, you know, the shelter to take care of whatever you got to take care of. Or they'll let you go past curfew if you have, like, say, a doctor's appointment. But shelters definitely are very strict. Some are different than others. Some allow you to have food. Some don't allow you to have food. Some, you know, allow you to do it overnight to see family members. Some don't allow you to do that. Some, you know, if it's, like, drug-related, they have even more strict rules on you. Make sure you're doing what you have to do. Some shelters where they have longer programs where you can stay there for a certain amount of time, but you have to attend classes. Is that something you want to sign up for when going to a homeless shelter? Because sometimes I feel like it could be a setback, but if you think about it in a positive way, try to learn and get as much knowledge as you could out of them classes. Because when I first went to the shelter, my first shelter being here in Atlanta with my kids, I did not like it whatsoever. I just wanted to leave, even though I didn't have nowhere to go. I just, I really did not want to be there. Like I was feeling down and everything. And then I just started just taking a day at a time, trying my best to make sure my kids is doing good. Because if you don't have your kids in check, your kids can, I'm telling you, can really jeopardize you and be the cause of why you may get kicked out. Or if you're yelling back and forth with the staff, that could be their reason why to get you kicked out, whether they're right I mean, whether you're right, they're wrong, they don't care. They just feel like, you know, they have the authority. So a lot of times I feel like these shelters could be like, they think they're power or they're above you because they're the workers or you're just, you're homeless. They feel like they could probably talk to you any old kind of way. And they feel like they have the upper advantage to get rid of you if it really came down to it or to report you for whatever reasons. Um... So you just got to be very mindful of how you carry yourself, how you interact with the staff members. Don't be thinking they're your friends because they could be messy too and so forth. So I just really want you guys to just really take this in. And another thing is, you know, just got to make sure you're doing your part, making sure you're children you know straightening it up you're not leaving messes behind you're attending your classes on time you know um they could help you like i don't know if all have job programs but they make it like tell you where you can go to or where you could get work clothes like they they are i feel like shelters are supposed to help you but at the end of the day a lot of shelters don't have that many resources to help if that makes sense and you know, so you could definitely see the bright side of being in a homeless shelter, but it definitely have its downside, like the downsides of it, you know. So that's just something I just want you guys to also think about. That's pretty much it. And like when it comes to housing, I just want you guys to know that make sure you are still being productive, even if you did apply for certain places, because they have wait lists. So if you're looking to go to like a low income housing, you know, anything of that nature, the wait list could be so long, even if it is like based off, you know, your income and everything, it could take years. So, you know, there, you could definitely get blessed, you know, depending on who you go through or where you go, but just know that some things could be like a process so it's the moment you go into a homeless shelter make sure you are handling your business as soon as possible doing what you have to do having a plan don't just be sitting around you know just living life like you're just at your actual home no you are there to be on your grind to really be on top of things you know because they do not play like if they see that you're not really trying like it's like why are you there and they're not going to keep giving you an extension you know just because if they're saying you're not trying. So definitely make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Have a positive attitude. Stay out of the way. Stay out of the drama. And, you know, just focus on the bigger picture. You know, pray. 
just use that time to like literally grind and get as much information as you can. And some people may gatekeep, they may not tell you their business or whatever, and that's fine, but try to do your best. They have computers, or you could go to a library, utilize their computers, do whatever you have to, to get as much resources as you can that will help you in the long run. And this even applies if you was not even in a homeless shelter because you could be homeless in many different ways. You could be homeless in a car. You could be homeless in a hotel. You could be homeless on the streets. This same information applies. You may not have as much restrictions, but you may have limited like support. You know, like who's going to watch your kids? Things of that nature. So these are things to think about because shelters, they do provide child care. I can, like I said, I can't speak for all, and some don't. So it really just depends on what type of homeless shelter is willing to take you in. And through my journey, through my process, when I didn't have a place and when I was trying to get into like, shel like a shelter, a lot of them are full. A lot of them are booked. Like you would literally have to keep calling multiple times a day or every single day to see if they have availability. And they do like an assessment to see like, oh, why are you homeless? What are you trying to get? Like. You know, those are things they do to see if they even want you to come to their shelter. So sometimes it's not always easy getting in a shelter. And you just got to make the best of your situation. I trust me, I've been there. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to sleep in a car. I know what it's like to obviously not have no money. I know what it's like to suffer without having food. You know, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. So... I wish you guys the best. I hope if you have ever been homeless, hope you don't ever have to experience homeless, but it really it allows you to experiment and to know what not to do moving forward. It allows you to know what type of lifestyle you want for yourself, which you don't want to go back to. It's literally a learning process and it's just something temporary in your life. So don't think of it long term. Think of it something that you had to do, whether that's a life change for the better. Sometimes we all need those. Sometimes people probably just want to just give up on their life, become homeless because they wanted to leave everything toxic behind them and they just needed something free just to get their mental right. Sometimes people do that, you know? And so it's amazing how many stories you hear and when you do go to a shelter, people coming, like people coming through all, you know, walks of life and you just hear multiple stories of how they got there and just how you can learn from it. And, you know, a lot of people travel from out of town. A lot of people travel from out of town. They don't got nowhere to go in the new city. So they think they could just go to a homeless shelter. So it's just, you just never know someone's story or background. So it's not good to judge others either. But I just want you guys to keep a positive mindset and to know that it's just temporary and you don't have to be in this situation again. If you start, you know, learning from your past and start making healthy habits and knowing what not to do that you did before that caused you to be in that situation. So it's pretty much all just a learning experience. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.